might decide if Empire is going to land finals. For Atfinum, actually, it's the same story. Atfinum has four losses. We have four, or five losses now for Team Empire, and that's the, that's our that's what we look at if we see if people have a chance, if teams have a chance, and Empire, they can't really do it. Start of the game or start of the day, you said that it was going to be 2-0 for Empire. Empire, yeah. It was Matt who said it was going to be 2-0 for Adfinum. What do you say, Jake? Huh? Okay, let's go into the draft. All <laughs> because, right. Because uh, it's already on the <laughs> We've done it. We've done okay. it, guys. Uh, we, because I mean, last few games were very fairly on the long side. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially the first one that was, of course. Uh, but yeah, we are in the draft, and um, I will tell you that it was an IO first ban for Team Empire together with the Nature's Prophet, with the Void and the Earth Spirit banned out by At Finim on the Radiant side. Oh, what? Huh. <laughs> okay. Oh, bounty opening. Now, these guys got a plan, dude. These guys Yeah, you have to have a plan, plan if you first pick Bounty, because usually he's... Yeah, I guess you can first pick it, but it's usually a reactionary hero. You see, yeah. like, an Enigma, you see a Chan, you see an Ench, you're like, ah, you know, pick Bounty. Ench, maybe not so much. I mean, basically, they're telling him, hey, don't pick any jungle heroes, guys. Cause, yeah, uh... I mean, it, it kind of forces them into a situation where you, you are less incentivized to pick those heroes. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's also very counterable. Like, picking an early Bounty, like you said, they, they have to have a plan. That's the only thing I can think of, because opening with that hero just seems really... Maybe it's an Adfinim thing. You know, I was talking to Matt. He said he's, he's watched the team scrim. He's played against them as well. He thinks they're very talented. But mm. they have a tendency to pick these lineups that are really hard to run. And when you first pick Bounty, you feel like you're already making it a little bit hard on yourself in some ways. So I believe we'll that um, we have seen maybe next time play the... I'm looking it up right now, so it might take a little <laughs> while because there's been a lot of games. Um, I believe we have seen uh, uh, maybe next time play the Bounty Hunter. Oh. Very Seconds successful. Remain. Uh, but I will find out if that is the case. I actually found the game. They oh. lost. Okay. Never mind. They lost. <laughs> they lost. Okay. Not, that game. Yeah. Not a strong showing there. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, they were up against Vega that game. Oh, man. Right. This is such a strong opening from Empire as well. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, you know, this is this is the wild card strat, right? They uh, know that Empire watches the replays. Uh, they look for it. So they go wild card. They just I'm, pick. I'm just not a fan of the Donnie first <laughs> You don't believe in wild card? Come on. No, I mean, it, it, they could have a very good plan. I just don't know what it is. Wild card. So it's Ten like, seconds, wild card, remaining. maybe. Or first pick bounty, they get Beastmaster OD, and the game is hard. <laughs> the game is I don't know. certainly going to be pretty hard. Well. Well, we'll see what they do, because obviously it's just one hero, so we got a lot more to go. Yeah, we before the, the series in the pre-show, we talked a little bit about how Adfinim is always the team with the plan. Yep. And how sometimes they can execute the plan, and sometimes they can't. But even Matt was saying, like the moment that they start executing properly, the plans that they have are really good. Yeah, they'll so be super dangerous. They will be super dangerous. So this could be the game where they turn out to be super dangerous. Wild card. I suppose Wild that card. makes more sense than why they ban the ES. Because if you're going to pick Bounty Hunter, you don't want to play against an Earth Spirit. He's like another one of those heroes who has a tendency to move around a lot early game, and you know, you just throw out a rolling boulder onto mid. You just a nuisance, and maybe they're going to prioritize making that matchup a lot easier. So maybe they have something in mind. That they want to pick against the OD, where the bounty hunter can set up a kill, like Invoker is still available. Oh you know? yeah, you think so, I mean, you, they could just go for like the standard Invoker, but if they open bounty, I feel like they're the type of team that's not gonna just go for the Invoker, because that's like the, the <clears> meta <throat> pick. But what would if you, you, what would you play against OD mid instead? Uh, instead of Invoker. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna play against? I mean, OD you mid? can play, you can do what Empire do. You can play Puck. It's not that bad. Like you probably don't win the lanes super hard or anything, but it's not like OD can ever kill you, and it's also impossible to set up a gank on a Puck. Is uh, yeah, is Thug a Puck player? Oh, he definitely is. He's a Queen player too, though. He's a, yeah, mostly. Yeah. Known for I think they would probably pick him Queen, but I know he does play Puck. I've played against him in pubs, and he's played that hero, so I definitely know it's in his arsenal. But they're gonna go with the Sven. Uh, they're picking it into Beastmaster OD, which I find. They gotta have. Okay, I'm like super confused right now. Wild I am mega cars. confused. Wild. They have wild a plan. Car. <laughs> okay, they so the, this is the reason why I think it's weird. They already have lockdown through BKB, right? So they have to have yeah. some hero that's gonna help set up for the Sven. Maybe it's Bat, maybe it's Puck, maybe it's, you know, whatever. But they have to pick one of those heroes now to help the Sven actually stay on target. Yeah. They banned. Or IO is banned, you said, right? Yep, yeah. Okay, so that means there's no IO. Uh, there's so there's no, no relocate. There's no so there's no there's like no relocate orc. into bounty hunter combo, which is very commonly seen. So that's yeah. also not available. Mm -hmm. I have actually <clears throat> no idea where they're going with this. And they also this could be their their key though. Element of surprise. You confuse them. Yeah. And then you hit them with like a rope a dope Ten fourth pick, and then you're just like, what's happening? We they lost. They got rope a dope. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. It could happen. It could All happen. Right. Probably not gonna. This happen. is why we need Matt American. over here because he's seen the team play. So he's probably over there explaining to Owen right now why they're picking this stuff. But I haven't seen them scrim. So I don't know why they're picking this. What is rope dope <laughs> It's like hitting him with the okie doke You know what I mean? They just don't know what it is. Come they, on. They don't know. That, that's the whole point is what is the rope a dope Rope-a-dope's a strat. 
You don't know what it is. Yeah. And then it's a rope a dope. You bring them you into the know. corner. Help. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's fine. All right, it's I got. Fine. I got this. All right. Rope a dope's no boxing term, right? Okay. You bring him into a corner. Guy thinks he's gonna be able to hit you. What do you do? You dodge. You dodge. You dodge. You tire him out. You rope him in that corner, and then boom. Oh, is it actually? Because that would make sense slightly, but he could have I don't actually know if that's where it comes from. He could just be making some yeah, random... I, I feel like that's... He's the type of guy who knows enough about useless crap that's, to where he would know that. There's the boxing term, and then there's the term in juvie. Oh, hey, you talked dope. about this guy before. Who did I talk Before the show even started, the tusk. <laughs> the, the tusk, tusk. Yeah. You did. Did we? Was it you? I don't know. Probably. I talk about a lot Tusk of stuff. Tusk is really no, good. We, uh... we talked about it, and then and then was it like yeah, but only Ehome picked it at the Shanghai. Oh Asia. yeah, that's right. That was so, you, right? Woo, yeah. He's yeah, really yeah. good at punishing though. Like against heroes like Bounty, th this is basically the substitute for an Earth Spirit when you can't get your hands on it. He's a hero who's going to be very active early, looking for kills. You already have offlane Beastmaster, so you need another hero that's going to help you know control the lane and, and deal with the Bounty. And Tusk is a really good hero yep. for that, and also. It helps you actually kill. So if you get a really good ice shard onto specific heroes, like even the bounty if he's caught on the river or something, you can block him completely. You can kill him. So it's it's a very strong hero. Not seen too much, obviously. But yeah. Very good. Kind of a niche pick. God, yeah. you know what I would really love to see is a uh, a tusk scepter. I think I've ever seen that one time in my entire tusk scepter. I saw Universe kick. buy it when he used to play for EG. That yeah. was the one game I think I remember seeing it. Yeah. He bought it when they had already won. <laughs> and then <laughs> when he used to play for EG. Yeah. Oh, it sounds so sad. It sounds weird, right? It when he does. used to play for EG. It's, it's like, oh. Well, you won't have to save for long. He'll be back soon. He'll Whoa. be back. <laughs> they always come back. They always come back That's to steal true. a different player. So, <laughs> so all right, anyway, we should move on. Uh, Bane yeah. picked up here. Uh, Bane is... Okay, so both of their supports are really good against Bounty. And I think the whole purpose of the bounty was to help try to win mid, because that's typically what the hero's for, right? Or you win A lane with it. Yeah. You know, you go there, you punch him, you know, you maybe set up a kill or two, and you just pressure. But Bane and, and Tusk are really hard for Bounty Hunter to pressure. Like, really, really hard. Bane maybe even more so than the Tusk. Because if you start hitting him, he hits you back, and then you get brain sapped, and then you're like, oh, well, I actually just don't do anything now. So I, I think the bounty is going to kind of struggle early game, uh, personally. Uh, like I said, though, Mad knows way more about this than I do. He's seen the team. Okay, so Maybe he sees this draft time. and he knows exactly what's going to happen. I'm putting I've a lot of pressure on him. I'm sure he'll pull through, though. <laughs> He's going to analyze this to perfection. He's gonna yeah, do I, I'm absolutely sure. Like, in the sure. first five minutes, Owen's not going to say anything and it's just like going to let Mad explain. My head's actually going to explode from the but knowledge. this is going to go for I think yeah. I just saw him playing Smash outside, so that's probably not good. <laughs> uh, he just hasn't <laughs> watched any of it. He's like, oh. He's like, what are they doing? <laughs> And then I would look very silly. All but, right. So if Bounty Hunter doesn't have a good early game, what does he uh, do? You soak a lane. Like, so you say you get this Death Prophet level 6 and you start pushing, you use Warcry, you know, you have Rooted really Restoration, they got some good sustain, they got good 5 men. You just give Bounty the lane until he hits 6, so he might go off lane depending on what they pick. Mm -hmm. He might. They could actually decide to just say, we're not going to roam Bounty and put him in the off lane. Because I feel like that might almost be better than picking an actual off lane hero, because I feel like it's going to be so hard for him to do anything that he might get more out of just literally sitting in a lane and doing nothing else. But we'll see. I, I doubt that's the case, but it could happen. Uh, and then once a he gets tracked... strategy. Indeed. Yeah, well, once you get tracked, you actually just run at them. <laughs> like, you have Warcry movement speed, you have Bounty Hunter movement speed. It makes it very easy for you to stay in Soul Siphon range, Five or Spirit Siphon, whatever the heck it's called. Yep. And you just run at people and you spook them. That's All right. what you do. So who are we looking at here for Team Empire? I mean, it, it really seems like they need a, a very good lockdown, yeah? Uh, well, let's see, they already have Beast and Bane, so they oh, have yeah. their BKB locked down pretty much. Okay. And and Tusk Punch also goes through BKB, so I okay. really think this Fen is going to have an absolute nightmare of a time staying on anyone. I feel like they need maybe a more single target to help kill the, the Sven and the <clears throat> Death Prophet, because they have a ton of lockdown, but their single target is... Eh. The Spectre got removed. Which which core yeah. would you uh, would you think for Empire? Mm. I maybe an Ursa? Be a bear. Oh, yeah. Maybe a bear. Very totally high burst thought. damage. Great against Death Prophet. Totally yeah, very good. good. You go in, you pop in Rage, you just bam, punch him. You want to get rid of that spook. And you have Fiend's Grip locked down, and you have Roar. Actually, and, and there are no... is not bad either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just clap and, and get that. Yeah, yeah. There's no saves on the side of Ad Finim, so... Yet. Do they go back and put the bounty off lane and pick, like, Avenge or something? I don't know, man. It really feels... I feel like Empire just outdrafted them super hard this game. Oh, my Ten God. What? This is an Omni game, dude. Is it an Omni game? This is an Omni game, bro. Oh this is God. it. Please. Purification to get rid of the Ursa. You can repel to take off the It doesn't nightmares. get rid of the Ursa. You don't purify and the bear just disappears. <laughs> He's still there with Enrage on it, like, 95% health going... 
bro, I'm a bear. They don't like the light. They don't like the Lord. They okay. don't like the omniscience. Bear, maybe bear a badin. Maybe a badin, but not omni. Hey, Absolutely you can omni. have an invisible bounty hunter next to a target and heal that guy. Boom, dude. Boom. All right. The they could actually. Spooks. They could go for like a DS. They could go for like a DS bounty lane, and then just ion show Dark the bounty. Darkseer is banned. He's banned. Yes. I wish Dark, I had my glasses. Darkseer and Bear Rider. I just thought about it and I was like, oh, that would actually be really good. And then I can't actually see the screen. So Which offlaner should have left, though? Um, Nightstalker. Nice. Oh, nice okay. okay. Damn it, damn it. A little bit it. of a different approach. It's really good, though, because he's one of those heroes that's so mobile in the fights that you can throw out silences. You can interrupt uh, the Fiend's Grip really easy with Nightstalker, right? You mm -hmm. just run around, do your thing. It's like, okay, he's Fiend's Gripping, boop, hit him with a void, you know, True. hit him with silence. You can put the... Uh, silence onto Ursa as well. Five seconds, he can't enrage, can't really deal any damage. I think it's probably one of the better picks they could have gone for since DS was banned. But who's going to win? Oh, Empire going to win. I oh, think, I think their, their draft I think is way better, in my opinion. Empire's absolutely going to win, but, but I'm up for the wild card, dude. I'm going in on team whatever their name is. Ad, Ad Finum. <laughs> wow. Ad Come Finum. on, dude. I'm You're just kidding. Best. I know Come their on, team dude. is Ad Finum. I shall go. Brothers wild card. We You're, got this. You're hosting Team the E game Empire. Olympics. I am. Mad Finum is not going to be there. <laughs> so, like, He's wild. Savage. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I think. Uh, I think I'm going to let uh, Matt decide if Ad Finum is going to take it. I've already okay. said Team Empire, and I believe that that's going to be the case. But maybe Matt knows exactly what Ad Finum is going to do. We're going to find out if he knows what the plan is because it is time for Game One: Ad Finum versus Team Empire with Matt and Odie Pixel. And indeed, a very warm welcome to, welcome to you, ladies and gentlemen. We're here for the second series of the day. And uh, Mad's shaking his head there to That's some of the panelists' comments. Way or... too much pressure, man. <laughs> too much pressure. I don't think I can handle that. Ah, ah, you'll be fine, lad. We've got it here. And uh, out of Finn versus Empire, indeed, the two teams meeting now. And this is game one. And, and Mad, well, do your stuff. Tell us tell us what's going on here between the two sides. There's going to be, I mean, they want to secure lanes at Finn for sure. Uh, the, the Bonnie first pick is not surprising. It's something they run a lot. Uh, they didn't really have a clear plan they just love having like the way maybe next time plays he's he likes to roam he likes to like get information sort of create space so he usually he's he's always playing those like uh, bounty bane sort of annoying heroes um but like the panel said in that game at finn they have really good support to actually deal with the bounty they don't really care um the, the bane or the tusk they don't care running into the bounty it's not a problem the nice overhead aspect can also be explained by the fact that it's a great counter against Beastmaster. Like, usually you pick Beastmaster for that hawk, for the global vision, the information that you can that you can get. But when you get to those mid late game, it's probably almost darkness. Like all the, it's darkness all the time, so the hawk doesn't give you any information almost. So it really shuts down the Beastmaster. And I think it was a great last pick. It's also quite a strong laner. Um, although the Ursa might might still be able to kill him, but. I think the lanes are going to be very decisive in this game for both teams. We've seen the mid lane already with the sentry down, scan up, making it very well known that um, MNT is under under vision and well, they're actually going to try and go in a bit on Scandal. Scandal taking a fair bit here. And, uh, he he did not buy his by his solve yet. Or okay, no, no, no these guys just come out from, good. from Sask. It's going to be very needed. I mean, this kind of jewel on jewel mid, uh, who, who should be coming out top of well, actually, hold that one lane, Afterlife. I think it's going to be an even lane. It has yeah. to be an even lane because of the pressure from the bounty and the tusk. Like it's going to be sort of a two versus two on that lane. They're going to play without sentries, but the OD is not really going to be able to pressure the DP. And same goes for the DP because if you go on his high ground when the tusk is here, you're going to die. And same goes for the bounty OD, the, the bounty DP combo. The nice soccer is struggling a bit. Ursa is a very strong hero with nice soccer. He can just buy boots or venom and run you down. So. And he did not go for this Iron Talent, so the bounty is gonna he's gonna need to help the Night Soccer. Else the Night Soccer is gonna be super super poor in this game. He needs to help him get some sort of space and levels. And as soon as the Night Soccer gets hits level four, he's gonna be roaming anyway. He doesn't wanna stay here. See MNC just can't decide the die. posture and Rams is looking to die. go in indeed. They've got the uh, shards to block him up and as you said. They've got a lot of control on this lane and they just need to allow us to get in with the punches. They should be able to find the kill each and every time. Bottom lane, afterlife. Took down a bit to the Maledict, but he's got the Tango regen, so he will be fine. 
But I mean, if you are this night, so I guess this is the trouble as well. If you don't find a lot in this lane, it's not really like you're, you're the world's fastest jungle. I guess you can get an Iron Talon and try yeah. and work with that, but it's it's a hard lane for him. If he goes jungle, he's gonna get like level three, four by minute by the time the the night kicks in, okay. and it's honestly reasonable. Yeah. I, I think it would it should have been the approach. He probably expected the bounty maybe there is a bit of miscommunication he was like uh, he expected the bounty to play with him on that lane so they could actually try to pressure but i don't actually i don't you think it makes sense like you don't really want to pressure those heroes honestly sure ursa is gonna get five cs less but does it really matter like at the end of the day that safe lane is really hard to contest like bane tuscar ursa like it's such a strong lane so the nice officer just focus on getting early levels so when the knight kicks in he can actually pressure uh, in that respect as well, do you feel that the bounty's got to kind of hang around here top to allow a little bit of safety for the Night Stalker, or should he be kind of turning more towards trying to harass down the OD in the mid lane? I think he should harass the OD, he can yeah, even get kills on the Beastmaster if he doesn't expect it, and now he, he just decided to neutral. It might be scary, but the OD has quite a lot of damage, yeah, he's, might, he's not gonna die, he he's has a fair fire, fire. Yeah, yeah. he should be fine. But it's still a lot of pressure on the OD, very interesting pressure because he was really close to his bottle and now he's not gonna get it, and DP has it on the way, so... A bit of an edge for the DP on this lane, and yeah, it, Nice Soccer is, is a bit sad because he didn't go for the Iron Talent, so he's gonna struggle a bit. But I mean, he might be fine. The first night is gonna help him come back. I mean, when the, when the first night comes out as well, what do you expect to see the Night Stalker do? Ooh. No, they're not gonna kill him. I don't think he dies. Maledict and Storm Hammer. He's level one. Oh, nice block. Body though, blocks. From Madara. They might just do that. Lang wish not to get those extra punches in. The very far actually regen. Die with the body block. That's gonna be very close. Oh! That was very close. Really close, good body yeah. block from Odara. Very nice one. Very, yeah. I was level 2 Maledict. Yeah, that's, that's actually a lot of damage. Interesting build from the Witch Doctor, actually. Very aggressive build. Oh, it certainly it, pays off there. Most of the offlaners aren't really used to that. Usually no, you go no, for, no. The, for the heal. And so when you see them, the Maledict is already too late. Yeah, tough game for the Night Stalker. Tough game. It's He can't jungle with all the Iron Talent, that's for sure. It's not effective I mean, at all. Can he even achieve anything this first night, do you feel? He's level 2, he doesn't have boots. I don't think he can now. He, he, he could have if he was like level 4 with decent farm. Had he farmed that camp like 2 or 3 I mean, times. Uh, he's gonna be fine. Yeah. He's gonna be a bit harder to catch, but if the Ursa gets on top of him with the first spell and the over Venom, he probably has one. Even if he doesn't, honestly. If he slows him, he's dead. Ursa's running towards him. I don't think he makes it. Yeah, with the snowball, he's dead. Even with the night time, like, this is so much damage. So much damage. Really yeah. tough game for Night Stalker. I mean, in, in well, mid lane, though, they do still find themselves a kill in return. They're I mean, getting really good trades. Like, yeah, the fact that Night Stalker's suffering, well, they're, they're trading it for an OD suffering in the mid lane. That's the only be problem is that, already. like, your Night Stalker, this is, this is when you come back, usually during the first night, right? If you had a tough lane, because if he still struggles right now, then it's going to be another day phase where he's going to be completely useless. Usually, you, you want him to have a decent time and then try to work to him, like get him Midas or face boots or whatever that can help him mm. carry a bit his momentum. But that's good rotation from the bounty, I think. Yeah, Honestly, it's, it's good. It's maledict and... again, and it's kill every time. Yeah. So we see both off laners, they're struggling a lot. They're playing versus really strong lanes and they did not start with a, a jungle oriented build. The Beastmaster bought a Quilling Blade. He's probably thinking about it, but he just can't get that boost of gold that's gonna help him get that, that item. So it's a... Uh, the game is completely dead even, actually. I mean, if you don't take the mid lane into account. Yeah, the mid lane is certainly where, where, yeah, there's a bit of a different story going on. But you know, top lane, we might see something go down again onto the Knights. Talking about posture, looking to position himself here behind that tower, hoping that his teammates can push this in so they can get a chance to go in. He's actually just going to run straight for He's it. He's going to go for it. Yeah. He has a DD as well, or he doesn't? No, he doesn't. Oh, Ooh, that was very that close. Was, yeah. It would have been a kill for sure. Uh, it's a little unfortunate there. I guess just kind of underestimate the speed that this Night Stalker had and cutting it short with the shards. Scandal is not having a good game. Like he's, yeah, he's been like pressured a lot, and the Tusk hasn't helped mid at all. Actually, he's been like focusing down the Night Stalker. I mean, I think it's it's gonna pay off in the sense that as we said, like Night Stalker doesn't come back easily. But um. Uh, Odi is also one of those heroes that he kind of needs a good start, so it's a bit of a tough decision for the Tuscar. He definitely made his choice, um, and he, like, focused the Night Stalker really hard. After life now, going for a bit of choke point jungling here, but there's going to be a rotation and MNT. They're going to spawn him out. If they've got spawn He's here dead. as well, and with the Maledict, it's... Yeah, it's, there's not a hope here for this Beastmaster. 
this Maledict definitely paid off. Like, it did so much in this game. So, very good decision by the captain of Altheim. And I've got the dust out on to Bounty, but MNT... He can walk to the right. Yeah. Places a ward. He's actually going to be fine. The dust is going to run out. Is that... Oh, wait, if he loses too much intel, though. Oh, he got it off. All right. Oh, He's under the tower, though. <laughs> oh. That was close. A bit yeah. of misplay from the Bounty Hunter, yeah. but the idea was there. Yeah, very close to surviving through that. Yeah, this, yeah there's a tier two that. This master is like, so I can't be on the lane. I can't farm the big cannon. What am I gonna do in this game? What's my, what's my business? I'm mean, actually say it's just not a great game for off laners. This one. It, it really isn't. Mid lane trying to go into scandal. He'll hold back the death prophet there with Nastro, but Poshka's there as well. So it's hard really for the side of Abfinim to go in on him. But uh, as you said, the, the damage may have already been done as we're seeing Death Prophet with about 1.3k net worth lead on this OD just seven and a half minutes in. Both lineups are very balanced, I feel. Um, I actually like the Adfinding lineup as well. It can get very scary. Like the way that lineup works is they take advantage of the nice soccer vision. They just open the fight. They're going to need to blink on Sven at some point for sure. They open the fight on someone. They just burst him down. Here. And then what, they just what's chase the curry people. What's the curry gone? Anything tasty? That's the recipe for seven. Oh, he got, he got it. got it though. Yeah. It's still a, like XP, gold, it's so good for the bounty when you get those curry. It doesn't matter. He doesn't care about dying on this. This is this is hundred percent worth it. That ulti though. That it's could a be bit a, of... a bit of a waste of the exorcism. Yeah. Is he gonna get him? I don't think so. Uh, that was a bit of a waste unfortunately. The, the shards were really well positioned. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still a, the fact that this Ursa has got that Mask of Man, it's the, the killing potential is very, very high for Ramses. We've seen already, he's got the teammates to set it up. And pretty much everyone, especially when the Beastmaster hits six, you've got your Roar, your Astral, your Charge, your Nightmares, everything to allow you to close the gap in top lane. Fortnite Snowball's stuff. done, it's going to connect, and the Shard Block's there. In comes Ramses. Oh, damn it. And she's going to back off here. He's going to play it safe because Spartan comes in, and Spartan with the Death Orb will actually punish the Tusk. Spartan so, with the plays, making sure that yeah. his team does well. And this is the type of like action that Nice Soccer really needs at this stage. Like it's good XP, good boost of gold, and it's during daytime, so it's like better than what it, like that. That's the best situation for him to try to come back in this game because he's having a really tough game. <laughs> the next big objective for uh, Empire is going to be the Roche. Scan up. And that one. Cast into the he's attack dead. from Bouncy, and he's gone. I mean, we're seeing just time and time again. They this could Bouncy. Bounce the the yeah, as well. He doesn't have a siphon though. Oh, he's gonna be toggled off. Doug. He has got this DD though, and that's more than enough. Yeah. I mean, this is getting out of control, actually. It Empire. really feels like on the side of half Finham, just this uh, Spartan um, and and Bounty Copper. This, you know, it's it's doing so much work. This Bounty Witch Doctor. Every lane, it's it's getting kills every time with the Maledict and the Bounty Surprise Attack. And that's only because they shut down that Beastmaster so much that they can afford roaming around. And this man yeah. just doesn't care. He he can bully the Beastmaster by himself because he's so fat. That the Beastmaster can't trade hit, he can't really, he just runs at the summon, kills them, he greets in the jungle. So Sven is having the best time of his life. Tread town 10 minutes in with 1k on top. Exactly, and the supports are roaming at the same time and doing a lot of work. So Adfinim is playing that very smart. If it wasn't for the Night Stalker dying a, a bit too much, I'd say on the off lane, the, the, that, that's like the dream laning phase for them. Because this isn't when they start greeting. Like the way they're gonna play right now is just gonna get information with the bounty, the witch doctor and the DP are gonna slowly farm, just be ready to like counter initiate or you can't really dive this lineup. It's so scary to dive against track, DP ultimate, and then the Sven's just gonna farm. They don't really wanna fight yet. The Sven needs to get at least one or two items, let's say SNY blink, and then he's gonna be ready to fight. It's a bit too early for now. This is the phase where Sven just wants to greed. Yeah, I mean, and it really is the fact that you look at those net worths and it's the top three farming and there's two on the side of our minimum, yeah. 4.9, 4.8, 4.7, and then a huge drop of a 2k down to that OD. And, and it's, it's not a good really game. Suffering. I don't think it's such a good game. Like, they have very mobile heroes. They have the Sven Sir spell, the track, like the movement speed boost from, with the track, the DP that's naturally fast. It's it, it, Night Stalker. It's not easy to catch those heroes. They do have good disables in Bane, Tusk and Beastmaster. But I mean, Ursa is going to lack vision. It's really not an easy game for Ursa. He needs Aegis, he needs to snowball. We're going to see if they can make something happen in the mid lane. They've got their eyes onto Scandal again. I mean, poor Scandal. He's going to know they have a ward. Yeah. Like, they're, they're just diving all the time carelessly. So they, it means that they know they can actually do this. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure Empire is aware that they have a ward behind the tower. Oh, Meposhka, That's you kill. cannot hang around there. And it's track kills as well at this point. And you might wonder why he reacted so late. It's because it's darkness. Like yeah, if you look at the it. if you look at the timer, you see that blue thing. It means that the vision is really reduced. They don't see anything pretty much. 
Can they try to... Honestly, if they could secure themselves the Roche at Finem on, on, on the back of a good fight or a good pick-off, it would be huge. It would be game-winning, I think. Yeah, taking that away from the With honestly. the DP ulti, yeah. Because when you're on that kind of lineup with your Rampart, you are relying on getting that Aegis. You, you really are. You really are. And we'll see, uh, just taking these towers as well, just securing this area around the Roche pit, it's, it's kind of just leading to exactly that for Abfinim. This is the second night, they're trying to get the tower, they have the DP ulti. I think that fight Ooh, is pretty hard. Ooh, that fight is hard. Beast grip onto Skylar, Ramnus comes in trying to work his way through Skylar. I don't think they're the, the kill here, but as you said, Deathboard, Annex is in, forcing yeah. Empire back. They're being tracked up, the chase down is there, they've managed to find themselves That's the kill ultimate Poshka. Storm Hammer onto Scanlan, it's a second kill. And it's two track kills as well, tower to go, and as you said, with the third one dropping, you can't. you can't hold. They're I, so I, tanky. Finham. Like, they have so, so much movement speed, so much armor with the Sven, the cask. It's such a hard fight to take, it's so hard. Like, unless you open on the DP, I think that's the only situation where you can actually commit to the fight. Like, sure, you open on the Night Stalker, but he doesn't do so much. Anyway, he's gonna throw one board or two, he doesn't well, King do much off. besides giving you vision. That, the, uh, that's not gonna work. Yep. But, I mean, just things like that, it's, you're not going to be able to bring the game back if you're throwing heroes in like that. Uh, the game is out of control right now. They, they're losing towers when they they, just, they shouldn't because they have a good lineup at defending those towers. They can just push out with the shards, the leave. axes. Yeah, this is at out of control. 13 minutes in. Completely out of control. <laughs> because this is the the, the the very moment in the game where Empire should be playing slow and smart. More ancient. Get, get a pick off, the get the Roche. And like start snowballing slowly, like bit by bit. But this is not like this. Would say FNG, not like this. I mean, yeah. Look at you see at the moment the Sven. He's pretty much yeah. got the same net worth as the Earth and the OD put together. It's very close. To I them. mean, he had a dream game. He kept yeah. on farming, stacking ancients, farming them. If this rush for fight goes bad for Empire as well, that it's that probably could be the end of the coffin. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They need that fight to go well. They didn't use much. They have everything ready besides the finger. How long exorcism? They don't have it. It's, it's, it's very long cooldown. Yeah, it's, yeah, as you said, just still 40 seconds. They need to win this fight, but like you're fighting against Witch Doctor with all summons. It's such a Rams is his corner on the front of it, and I just disappeared. Yeah, see you later. This, Maybe this next time. play from Abfinum. Maybe next time. And these track kills, it's going to be another one as the Void comes through. You can try TP it. and he might just... And he does. Yeah, good TPL, good awareness. Oh, but this game, Abfinum, 13 to 5, 14 minutes in. I mean, is this down to the player or from the start? Could you maybe foresee this happening down to the draft? Is this is this an outdraft or, or what's going on in there? I mean, in theory... The way the fight are gonna develop is like the Sven's gonna open on the guy and kill him. They have a way to stop him, they have Roar and Tusk, but yet again, they're playing in darkness, like they don't see anything. It is actually so hard for the Tusk and to do And you can't this find this You can't. And the Tusk is playing without a blink, so he needs to run in, he doesn't see anything, and he needs to try to snowball the target. He's just gonna get silenced or stunned. Scan him. They don't see anything, he doesn't see them. There's a big snowball. They're trying to go for him. Oh, it's the Storm Hammer coming out to Ramsey. He's silenced up as well. Look at the, the green look at the through. Oh, it's over, surely. Three dead on the side of Empire. They will manage to find the Death Prophet, but it's Good over. Game. It is all over. Ad Finum. Absolutely destroying Empire. There you go. What a performance by Ad Finum. Yeah. They played that perfectly. The supports did so much. Spartan and the, the Bonnie heck? Hunter. Great performance by the supports. Great rotations. Like, honestly. They yeah. outplayed Empire, like they outplayed them so hard. I, and I really think that is, you know, in the laning stage, the Witch Doctor and the Bounty. They, you they said, so had Finham in the draft, you are like, they do this pretty much every time they pick that Bounty first, and yeah. you can see why, because they know perfectly how to play over it. You get the ball rolling, you get that track online at a good, what, 10 minutes when it came on. And, you know, at the end